Coffee is a very common substance used for a wide variety of things, and it is the, one of the most popular drinks in the world. Coffee contains a chemical known as caffeine, and that is exactly what we're going to be extracting today. Here I have some solvent, which uh, which is some just some soluble uh, coffee, and we're just simply going to add some sodium bicarbonate to it. This is simply going to help, you know, mix everything up well and uh, just make sure that we extract as much as uh, as much of the um, the caffeine as possible. So after this, I'm just going to add some hot water and I'm going to add uh, about 10 uh, about 10 milliliters of water. So after I add the 10 milliliters of water, I'm just going to stir and I'm just going to let it there. So while I'm doing this, uh, caffeine is um, very soluble, very, very soluble in water, but with the addition of dichloromethane, which is what we're going to add uh, right now, it, it separates out. So here we have a separatory funnel, and I'm going to add the coffee. Just gonna let it sit here for everything to dissolve nice and then I'm gonna grab the bottle of dichloromethane so it is recommended using a beaker but I was kind of dumb and I used a cylinder instead so you can see some drops fell off because it's uh, dichloromethane is, uh, has a high volume so normally it's uh, it's kind of heavy it's a very heavy liquid so it's really uh, it's really weird but you know so now I have the separatory funnel and now I'm going to add the TCM. As you can see, once again, I was very clumsy and I did not add it slowly. Uh, don't do this, just if you're trying to separate coffee or trying to do this experiment, just make sure that, um, that you're putting the TCM very slowly because it is very cold. So yeah, the difference in temperature is going to react, not react but it's going to react physically with the coffee, which is warmer. So, as you can see, I spilled a bunch of DCM everywhere, uh, and it kind of became a mess. Uh, you can see some DCM starting to separate out, but uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm just picking everything up, and I was kind of I was kind of clumsy. And if you want to do this experiment again, try to add the the DCM very slowly. Uh, kind of like you know when you're adding water to sulfuric acid uh, when you're adding water to sulfuric acid you you always need to make sure that that you're that you're adding it slowly and you know because After this, I grab a funnel and I just pour it in uh, slowly. So I should have used the funnel from the beginning, so so uh, you know all of this could have could have been prevented. So as you can see after this, I shake it and I pour it back. Now all I need to do is wait a couple of minutes until everything separates out. It's not going to be very clear, but it is going to contain some of the caffeine. Because I'm using soluble coffee, some of the therobromine is passing out. Therobromine is a dark colored chemical that is present in things like chocolate and coffee. It is normally found in the inside, but with soluble coffee it has less of it, so I prefer using soluble coffee. But anyway, I just poured everything out and I need to make sure that I don't get any of the other coffee. So I put it all out into a beaker. Now what I do with this is simply waste, and I don't, I don't, don't really need to do anything with it. I, I 
as you can see here I have my uh, all my substance and it is a bit red because of the pure bromine but this is fine it's not really gonna crystallize out because it will evaporate as it uh, will evaporate over time so all I need to do right now is I need to pour this uh, this again into the into the separate tone funnel to just to make sure that all the coffee is dissolved and try to separate out a little bit of the thermal uh, room just simply by cleaning it up just like this in order to prevent any leaks from the container i put a, a plastic uh plastic thing on the on the bottom As you can see, I'm now starting to prepare to add the DCM. So now I grab a separate turning funnel. You can't really see it because of the camera angle, but I do have one. I slowly pour it out, and then I kind of realize that. Uh, once again, I need uh, another beaker because I spilled some of the DCM again. As you can see, now in order not to form an emulsion with the DCM and to make sure it separates nicely, I don't need to shake it all. All I need to do is just pour it back and forth to make sure that everything is nice and dissolved. As you can see, my solution is still, still colored and it normally would be a very light yellow. But again, because I'm using soluble coffee, some of the bromine, some of the therobromine is not going to be dissolved. As you can see, now I pour everything into a beaker down below. Once I have everything nice and clear, all I need to do is put it into a round bottom flask. So as you can see here in my sand, I'm putting a round bottom flask and we're going to heat it up to make sure that all the DCM is gone so the caffeine can crystallize. So as you can see now I'm adding the solution and I don't have any heating mantles or anything like that. So I'm just simply going to be using a heat gun. It is going to be less efficient and there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of caffeine that is not going to be uh, crystallizing. But I guess this is fine. But anyway, this uh, dissolving and you know dissolving caffeine and doing this whole experiment is very very uh, 
it's not very efficient. You're not gonna get a lot of capital liquidity. You're probably gonna get about 23% or less. Uh, you know, maybe I'm gonna get like less than five grams. It's very inefficient. And if you really wanna use the cabinet for something, it's, you know, you gotta make sure that you clean it up and make sure you do a lot of recrystallizations to make sure that everything is pure. But anyway, I'll just sit here with the, uh, with the uh, heat gun and I'm just gonna do a time lapse on it. Once I finish with everything, I pour it, I let everything evaporate, and now I need to let it crystallize. As you can see, some caffeine is still going to get around the beaker, and I'm not going to be able to get it out. But anyway, let's talk about the crystal form of caffeine. So caffeine has very, very small crystals, kind of like chloroform or uh, you know any other crystal that's very small. Something like pheno, it's, it looks very wet uh, and it kind of looks like cotton. But anyway, I just turn off the lights and let, let, let us sit here for a couple minutes. So here's my caffeine. As you can see, still it needs to dry, and it's not as yellow as I expected, but it's probably good enough. Anyway, uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this is uh, this was a very fast video that I just wanted to do, and I just simply wanted to extract some caffeine. This is normally done in schools in the uh, organic chemistry lab. It's a pretty fun experiment. Just make sure that you're wearing gloves and goggles because DCM will burn you. Oh, when I was wearing gloves, I started spilling some of it because, again, I'm very clumsy with chemicals and I can't pour anything into any beaker without spilling a little bit of it. But uh, anyway, I did spill some of it in my glove and because I'm using latex gloves and not nitro gloves, uh, some of it did get through the latex and it did start to burn pretty bad. So just, you know, just make sure that you're uh, wearing gloves and everything. Uh, but besides that, it's a really fun experiment. And, you know, just seeing how much caffeine I expected to be in, in coffee and what I got is uh, it's pretty weird. But uh, anyway, thank you. Thanks for watching.